Hey, how about them tops, son? All day, SEC boys. You're listening to the Red Out Podcast. Hello and welcome into a brand new season of the Red Out Podcast. My name is Devin and we'll be both reminiscing tonight. Hey Jared, how are you buddy? See if I can get you connected. All right. I think we're set. There we go. You sound great. Awesome. Uh, so anyway, as I was telling our listeners, I'm kind of like the rest of you all. I haven't been keeping up with Western this week or this past few months. So I've been hiding under a rock. So we'll be going down this rabbit hole together to see what Western's been doing and uh, what kind of restrictions and everything's going through with the COVID and all that good stuff. So, uh, I guess first things first, uh, we kind of need to touch on um, the big news today that Jacquez Sloan has entered the transfer portal. Yeah, that was kind of surprising. I, I I was extremely surprised there. Um, I had heard the rumor on the where we had been talking on Discord, the rumor that it was he was going to transfer. Um, but you know, it was kind of it, the validity was questioned, so I didn't really know if it was true or not. And then, uh, I saw where someone had posted that it was on his Twitter that he is going to transfer or he's in the transfer portal. Um, so what do you think uh, kind of contributed to that, Jared? I don't know. I must show that we have better wide receiver depth than maybe we would have first thought at the beginning of the season. But he still would have been like one of the main, probably top two or three targets for Piggy at quarterback. He would have been made one of his main probo, one of his main uh, receivers. So, yeah, I don't I know. Can... It's really interesting. I'm not really sure why. It could be a whole bunch of different issues. I mean, we don't really know for sure. But yeah, he would have been a top target. So. I guess that maybe shows that someone else has stepped up to do really good. I mean, I don't know if Garland LeFrance has officially moved like to the slot completely now. I mean, he could possibly be up there. Of course, all these other young guys that we got. So it'll be interesting to see how the wide receivers look come Saturday. I agree. Now, how do you say Tyrell's last name? I think it's Pig Rome. Okay, that's, I, that's. I haven't good. actually really heard it <laughs> pronounced yet. So I mean, you know how we are with the pronunciations on this show. We just roll with it. Exactly. Um, so Tyrell, sorry, buddy, if we mess it up, but um, he is coming to us from Maryland. He's a tr- grad transfer uh, from Maryland. Um, so he's leaving the Terrapins, coming here. I, I assume it was. I mean, honestly, I'm not sure on why he transferred either. Honestly, but. I mean, just more playing time. And, if, I mean, it's good, a good system to buy into, to be a senior, to have someone with a really good offensive mind like uh, Tyson Helton and being able to come into his offense. I mean, he's basically the same type of player that uh, Ty Story was. So he fits in with the offense that Coach Helton's going to yeah, be running. Yeah, I agree. I think he's got a little more so. – uh... I was going to say, I think that he would probably be a little more – um, probably versatile, more like uh, like a Cam Newton quarterback from what I've seen. But yeah, like he's um, a really solid runner from some stuff that I've seen from him. So that's definitely something I, else that he kind of brings. Because Story, he could get like use some good yardage running a little bit, but I still cringed every time I saw him get hit. <laughs> <laughs> just because, I mean, if Western has anything, it's a long lineage of quarterbacks just consistently being hurt. So, but I mean, he was tough. He took so many tough hits all last season, and he survived. Which is oh, amazing. And I think that I think Piggy is going to be pretty. He's going to be pretty tough. He's got that ACC experience. He's beaten some pretty good teams. And I think that's the perfect person that we could have got to step in for this season. I, I think so, too. When I saw the news he was transferring, I was like, wow. Um, and then you got the news that um, Stephen Duncan was transferring. Where did he end up? Did you see? Um, I want to say it was somewhere closer to home, maybe. I can't remember. I know it was like an FCS level school. But, yeah, I mean, obviously, I think he'll do pretty good at that level. Like, he will dominate, I think, at that level for sure. 
with the I think, I think you're he's right. Played um, he's played a lot of games and everything, so I'm, I think he'll do really good. Oh, I, I have no doubt. I mean, I think he did very really well at Western, and, you know, with the injury, I just, you know, it's one of those where you're like, let me see. I'm going to try and uh, – I'm going to try and look him up real quick see what we can find. Um, I'm not seeing him. Okay. I can go to his dad's page and find him on Facebook. But anyway, um, looking back at um, Tyrell's stats here from uh, Maryland, he uh, – well, um, they didn't have a very good season last year, did they? Uh well, they started off rough. so hot where they were absolutely blowing out people at the beginning of the season. And I don't know if they had injuries or I don't know if people just figured out what type of offense they were running. And were to to it, but, uh, God, I hate that crap. All right, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like they started off really hot, but once they got to ACC – well, no, they're Big Ten, aren't they? I think they are Big Ten. They're not see, ACC. See, Maryland is one of – see, conferences don't make any sense because, one, Louisville is in the ACC, which there is nothing that landed yeah. about the city of Louisville. And, two, I, I mean, Maryland. Yeah, they're Big Ten. Sorry, I'm mistaken. But, yeah, they're no, they you're right. ACC. Yeah, you're fine. Like, they are very okay. Atlantic Coast. I've never been to where they're at, but – Oh, conferences are definitely conference. not geographic by any means. I mean – yeah. Uh, but it looks like, I mean, like you said, they started off hot. Um, they played who the flip is Howard, uh, the Howard Bisons. They beat them 79 to nothing. They played number 21 Syracuse, beat them 63 to 20. They lost to Pimple, lost to uh, Penn State. Uh, God, they got massacred by Penn State 59 to nothing. <laughs> um, they played Rutgers, beat them forty-eight to seven. Yeah, so they're big ten, not ACC. Yeah, they lost to Purdue. They lost to Indiana. They lost to Minnesota. They lost to Ohio Yikes. State. Lost to Nebraska, and they finished I mean, their season uh, on November thirtieth against uh, Mi- uh, Michigan State, and they lost nineteen to sixteen. I mean, if there's anything that Maryland and Western have in common, is that we can't beat anyone in the Big Ten. <laughs> I mean, evidently. Um, so, I mean, maybe that played into the transfer for Pick Um Maybe. He had 118 attempts, 69 completions for 719 yards. He was about 58.5%. Uh, had three passing TDs on the season. Six interceptions, longest pass, 62 yards. Sacked I mean, 10 times. If you look at the level of competition he went up against there, I mean, it's like Ty's story. I mean, you saw the stats that he had in Arkansas. I mean, they had almost the same record that Maryland, like you just described. It's almost the same kind of situation where, I mean, I mean, they have some decent stats. I mean, yeah. his completion percentage, like 58%. I mean, he had a decent amount of yardage and stuff, but – it's a lot higher competition in the Big Ten, which is, I mean, as I'm tough not, as the SEC. No, I'm, so. not, I'm not running him down by any means. I'm just uh, just looking at stats here, you know, just trying to gauge what we're looking at. And, I mean, they have yeah. several teams that are very competitive on their schedule last year. I mean, Ohio State was number one when they played them, and they lost 73-14. to 14. So, I mean, honestly, if Western played Ohio State, it would probably have been around the same score. Um, I think our defense would be a little bit better, but maybe. <laughs> well, hey, you know, whatever you want to think. Uh, but I mean, he got sacked 10 times. Honestly, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Through the first five games, he was not touched. And then, then uh, Brahms, Purdue, Boilermakers got two. The worst was Ohio State. They got four sacks in one game. Yeah. Um, but he ended I mean, up getting still one of the top five teams in the country. So, I mean, can't oh, yeah. About that. Oh no! I mean, as a realist, you got to be like, yeah, you know, you're probably going to get beat against Ohio State, but at the end of the day, if you're a coach, you're like, you got to get them pumped and make them think, hey, we're going to beat them. Um, uh, frantically googles how much we'll get paid to, <laughs> when we play them in Columbus in a few years. Yeah. I can't remember how much it is, but we'll definitely need every bit of that after this pandemic. Yeah, I mean, and it's um, rushing attempts. He had 153 for the season. And that's counting the minus 29 between Ohio State and uh, Nebraska. 
Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's not bad. I mean, he basically rushed for like 180 yards on the ground, got two touchdowns out of that. Um, his longest run was 61 yards against Purdue. Oh, that's pretty so, good. Very nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what you get. Um, no, I mean, I think he's going to be a good kid. I think he's going to play well for us. Um, I Here's wish. Here good. Gosh, I hate that crap every time. Um, but I, I think it'll be a good. Uh, I think it'll be. He's going to be a good pickup for Western. I think he'll do a good job. Um, and uh, as we were saying. Okay, we're talking winners and losers, so we're talking about Western football. Um, we uh, So anyway, we're talking about uh, Jacques Sloan leaving. We're going to have several players step up, it looks like, um, at wide receiver. I'm trying to look and see who's our most senior. Uh, well, Xavier Lane is going to be is a senior. Uh, J- Jacques Pearson. Yeah, we those still two have Jock West two guys, probably. One more time. Those two are probably going to be our top two receivers there. I would say so too. I mean, we lost uh, we lost several. We still have Gage Walker returning at running back. That's that's going to be mm-hmm. a huge help for us. Uh-huh. Um, I, and of course, Jakari Moses. They've got him listed as a running back as well. Didn't he play more slot last year? Or was yeah, he... they had him a lot more slot, I think, kind of situations. But well, he was he was injured most of the season last year, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. I swear, if this video pops up yeah. again, uh, yeah, twenty nineteen, he had one attempt for six yards. Yeah, and another thing is that Clay Davis, one of the linebackers, I think he's going to be out for the season with some type of injury. I can't remember what it was, but that definitely kind of sucks. But thankfully. Like linebacker is a pretty solid place that we got decent depth with it. I think we've got those people that transferred. I know that guy from Tennessee. I don't think he's going to be eligible to play this year, at least according to Jared McDonald with Bowling Green Daily News. He said that he probably wouldn't get to play. But I mean, we still have pretty good defensive depth. We still got D'Angelo Malone. I think they moved Jaden Hunter, the guy that transferred from Georgia to defensive end. That could be a good fit for him. So, oh, I mean, we still yeah. got a lot of good guys. Juwan Jones, all of them. So, they ought to be pretty stacked on the D-line. I am really looking forward to seeing how D'Angelo Malone plays this season. This he, will be a big year for him, for sure. Yes. Because there's a lot of eyes going on to hit, going on him in the preseason. And if he's able to dominate again like he did last year, there's a good chance he could be a pretty good draft pick. I agree. Um, of course, Eli Brown playing linebacker. Yeah. Um, he's, he's another one to watch on the defense this year. A lot of these guys back is huge. Yes, completely agree. Um, he's going to be, he's going to be one of those that's going to make some plays for us. Uh, so Devin keys back this year too. I thought he was a senior last year. Uh, I don't know. Is he on the roster? (laughs) He's on the roster as of right now. Uh, cause I thought he graduated or, I mean, maybe he's going to grad school. Yeah, another name that's been stepped up a lot last season was Kyle Bailey. He's going to be back too, I think. So yes. it's going to be good to have him back on defense as well. And of course, we've got uh, Corey Munson on special teams. Yeah, I know he's going to have another year after that great kick that he ended the season oh my with. Gosh, so. that my god! I mean, that's one of the most memorable things. Just sitting there. Of course, I'm sitting at work with it on my phone playing, and I'm listening, and I'm like, ah. Love that. Great, 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 great moments. I wish I could get that recording, but of course, I'm sure it's uh, copyrighted at this point. <laughs> maybe. I mean, maybe. Um, so, just kind of what we've missed so far uh, with the COVID like lockdowns, um, we have several conferences who have already either postponed or um, basically said, uh uh-uh, we ain't doing it this year. Um, those two being. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't it the pack and the Big Ten? Yeah, the Big Ten and the pack. I also think either the Mountain West or one of the weird mountain schools. Like I know UTEP is the furthest West team that is playing right now, and they're in El Paso. So all of those teams, like if, in U, well, not BYU technically. Yes, so yeah, I was going to say around. BYU. Yeah, we'll be playing them on Halloween now, and I'm really looking forward to that. 
Okay, I was gonna say, yeah, okay. One, two. Also, I know the Ivy League, they're not playing either. Yeah, and we've only got eleven games this year, is that right? Mm-hmm. So we it's couldn't get them. Dominion. Okay. So ODU's already originally, started. yeah. We lost Indiana, and I think that's when we picked up BY. No, because we were supposed to play Old Dominion, I think, for homecoming, and it was gonna be on Halloween, which would have been awesome. But considering Old Dominion elected to not play then we had to cut that. And I think that's when we put BYU. And we also lost uh, uh, Chattanooga. I don't think we're playing them at all, are we? They're on the schedule for the October 24th, unless that changes. I don't know. Okay. So they moved. They, that was what was going to start the season, I think. And they moved it back. So we're starting with Louisville. We're not going to have Indiana, which sucks. Because that would have been a good game. Yeah. Now Ross, he was just on a podcast with one of the Hoosier people talking about that whole series. So that's something to maybe go listen to after this. Yeah, definitely. I think that he shared Um, that. Yeah, I'll I'll try and share it on our Red Out uh, Facebook page or whatever, and we'll uh, we'll get that going. Um, But yeah, like I said, there's several conferences canceling. Kind of threw Western for a loop when Indiana and the Big Ten said, "Nope, we're done." Um, yeah, I know a lot of people yeah. did not agree with that decision either, but I mean, it is what it is. I know uh, I've heard um, I've listened. I, I know I'm guilty of this and I'm, I try not to judge others when they do this, but I listened to uh, KSR and they were talking about the sec when they were meeting to decide if they were going to have their season. And um, there was one uh, AD that took the most flack and that was Phil Fulmer at Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Because he said, he I don't know if he necessarily said we shouldn't have a season, but he was like, uh, we need to consider, you know, we shouldn't just say, yeah, we want to play football. He's like, we should really step back and say, is it going to be safe to have football in the fall? And, I mean, I think that's a legitimate, a legitimate concern. Um, yeah, because, I mean, you don't want to put your fans at risk. You don't want to put your student athletes at risk that are already – competing and doing all these things for the university. So, I mean, you always want to try to make sure that you have all your bases covered. I, yeah, completely agree. Um, The irony of this entire situation is not lost on me that you are basically saying that uh, college football is an essential thing. Yeah. I mean, I I think so. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I do too. I agree. But if you're having these athletes coming in and getting ready to, play in the uh uh and play college football in the fall you mean it's almost kind of in my thought that you should consider uh compensation but yeah that's the debate and uh I'm sh- there's a lot smarter people than me debating it so that's fine uh but uh western has as for, to the best of my knowledge, done uh, all that they can to protect the athletes. I do understand we had several tests positive. Um, I think so. at one there point was or another. That did. Yeah. Um, and there was some. There was some students, and wasn't there a staff member? It wasn't a. It wasn't like football or anything, but I think it was um, like yeah, a I facilities guy so. or somebody yeah. tested positive or something. Yeah, I'm probably just spreading rumors that aren't even true, so it's fine. I mean, they've got, um, at least with Western, I mean, at least publicly, there hasn't been that many cases, which if that's true, that there haven't been that many cases in general, I think that's a good thing. I mean, it, just to have I a agree. lot of people in the same place together and actually not have anything bad happen like that is good. I, I tell you, I don't know if you watch Hard Knocks, um, but it is mind boggling to watch, you know, these guys trying to practice and get ready for an NFL season. Uh, of course, this year they're following two different teams, um, the Rams and the Chargers, which they're both in L.A., uh, but they're following them and, it, you know, watching their testing procedures, watching what they're having to do to get ready for practice, which what they have to do to get ready for team meetings. It's just amazing. It's like, you know, from somebody who's been behind the scenes thinking about, well, how would we do this? How would we do that? It's just mm-hmm. Uh, you know, honestly, I think God, I'm not there right now. I think yeah, it would be the biggest pain. That's so hard to be able to 
adjust everything because i mean it feels like an eternity when we were talking about college basketball the last podcast that we had i think in april that literally feels like last year at this point oh you're Uh, yeah i completely agree the thing is is that if we had the knowledge that we have now we probably could have had the conference tournament and maybe even the ncaa tournament with like taking the nba's idea of a bubble and letting that process kind of work itself out. But of course, none of that had just happened. Like all of this was escalating to the point where we were going up against UAB, I think like March 16th or 15th, something like that. And I think you're right. Yeah. Out there was no game. Yeah. And didn't get to have anything, but now we've had this time off where we've been able to look at everything and be able to decide what we can do, what we can't do. And just to follow all the different guidelines the CDC and other people have out to make sure everything's safe. I mean, honestly, it's kind of crazy. I mean, to think about now, but you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. But for me, like, okay, I don't know how the NBA is doing it right now. But was it weird for you watching games with no fans or listening oh, to not games? really at all? Because the time off from April where there was no sports until the NBA bubble started right at the end of July, that was one of the longest dry spells. (laughs) Because, I mean, everything had been shut down, and there's just nothing going on. There's no sports at all, and it's just super depressing. And then finally, finally the NBA comes back. And I personally, I love the bubble. Like, I hate it the Pacers got bounced as fast as they did, but I mean, what else is you? But it it shows that that just worked because they've had all these teams down there and there hasn't been any new positive cases since everyone has been down there. And all the players that were positive had time to recover and isolate themselves and then be able to come back. So the NBA has shown that the bubble works. And I think that that's going to be a model that we see in college basketball, especially this season. I think think the bubble was a good idea too. Um, And now my thing is I think there were some sports that were just built for like COVID life. I mean, it sounds bad, but that's how it is. Um, one like of those being NASCAR. <laughs> Do what? I said you mean Conference USA football. Oh, yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, golf, NASCAR, you know, some of these sports like this. Like, I remember, like, one of the things, that, it was really funny. Uh, when, uh, was it Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and Tiger Woods? Oh, yeah, and- yeah. Was it Phil that played with them? There was another pro, and I can't remember who it was, but they had that where they played against each other. I believe that was probably like the most watched, you know, double, you know, (laughs) golf, whatever, match, whatever. I mean, that just shows how deprived people are of sports, yeah. Exactly, because people are like, oh, my God, I'll do anything to watch sports right now. And they're Honestly, like, hey, someone could have, like, nationally televised a YMCA dodgeball game, and it would have gotten, <laughs> like, 2 million views. <laughs> You're probably right. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure that people would have watched that, because, because it was so – I mean, it's so rough there for a while. It was just like, ugh. But I digress. Um, so we're talking Western versus Louisville. Uh, we got a new quarterback. Uh, coming into a fairly new system. Obviously, it's going to take a few games uh, to adjust to this new system. But, well, let's see. we got, okay, so they're next. Let's see. Okay, so I'm looking at the schedule here. I'm not going to read it all off. Uh, but, let's see. We have play uh, Louisville on the 12th. On the 19th, we have Liberty. And then on the 3rd, we have MTSU. So we've got a bye week uh, coming up in two weeks. Uh, right before the MTSU game. Of course, MTSU's game is to be determined as of right now. Um, So definitely check those out so you can see what's going on. Uh, And then, of course, on October 10th, we're going to be playing Marshall. Um, So we don't have, like, any really televised games, do we? Yeah, I mean, leave it to Conference USA to completely drop the ball on picking up any type of good TV deal for having a bunch of Power 5 conferences not elect to play right now as well as some other small ones, and we still get shafted. So it hurt me a lot on Saturday watching Eastern Kentucky play at Marshall on ESPN <laughs> at 12 o'clock. God. I had, yeah, I had a friend who uh, messaged me that they were watching that game, and honestly, there was there would be no game I would want to watch least than Marshall versus Eastern. Just honestly, because- what's the difference? There is no it, difference between those two no, games to me. <laughs> no, yeah, it's – yeah, it's it's awful. It it just 
I honestly don't even know who I would cheer for, the refs, you know? Yeah. Like, have they – it's going to be a ACC Network for the Louisville game, I think, Saturday, right? Yes. Yes, that okay. game is on at 8 o'clock on the ACC Network. I assume that's Eastern time. Yeah, my yeah. puppies are barking and my wife walking in right now, so sorry okay. about that. Um, but still, anytime we play a Power 5 team like that, that should be at least on ESPNU or ESPN2 or something like that. Yeah. That needs to be on one of the ESPN channels for all I care. Because that's a good in-state rivalry. Louisville, they were a lot like us last season, of course. They got a new coach. They had a horrible season. And then the new head coach in his first year did a really solid job. And now they're building off of that alongside us. So I think it was it's going to be a really good game on Saturday. And for some reason, we still can't get it on one of the ESPN networks. So, <laughs> Well, I will say, um, you, you talk about we should be on an ESPN network. Uh, next week, when we play Liberty, we're on ESPNU. See, so, <laughs> like, that'll still be a good game. Oh, I think like, so too. Hugh, think... Hugh Freeze is their head coach and everything. They went eight and five last year in their first year of being FBS. So, I mean, they've proven that they can be a pretty solid team. I wouldn't sleep on them on this in the slightest bit. But still, I would have rather have had Louisville on a big network instead of Liberty. But I mean, that's just. I, I honestly, I I agree with you 100. percent Um. I would think that the BYU game would be on something. Is that probably yeah. one TBD? And especially after the whole mascot fight that happened during the <laughs> pandemic too in April, like that was seeing yes. our two fan bases fight each other the way that they did on Twitter. And also the fact that they had to use bots to technically beat us in the first place was hilarious. And oh, it's yeah. still disappointing that Sirius XM actually gave it to them, even though it was pretty obvious that they purchased all of those clicks it was very, very obvious. Mm-hmm. But we'll see who wins on the gridiron. That's right. You can't cheat us out of that one. Yeah, they probably can. Yeah. But anyway, um, of course, middle, uh, middle, uh, MTSU, UAB, BYU, FIU, and Charlotte are all to be determined. So also, can maybe... we talk about how bad middle looked against Army? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, that, that toasted. Yes. What was the score? What was the final on that? I got tired of watching. I think they got straight up routed. I don't think they ever scored. It was like 30-something to nothing. Uh, I got 42. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, And that was 42. the same Army team. What, like, How much different is Army from when we played them last year? Are they that different? I don't think so. I mean, of course, Army does the same stuff they always do. Is I mean, middle they always do that triple threat, yeah. I hope so. I do, too. <laughs> I'd love to just crush them. Sorry, sorry, not sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd love to just beat the far out of middle. I, I really which we be- should have, we should have last year. But it was the fact that that was one of the most torrential rains I've seen in a home game, at least personally. Like it was raining <laughs> that entire ball game. It was a mess. Yes, and honestly, like we got to we got to beat middle this year. We got to beat Marshall this year. Um, and I'd love to beat it. We got to beat FAU as well. We got to beat Tiger. Yeah, but, yeah. Sorry, not sorry. Of course, there's the the funny thing for me is a is Coach Taggart took a lot of coaches and staff with him when he went to. Uh, where did he even go? Central. Uh, was it South USF. Florida? Bulls? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So whenever they went to South Florida, then they went to Oregon, then they went to Seminoles. Like most of the core groups stayed together. So. Basically, the core groups at Florida Atlantic right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, like, he took his secretary, who used to be a manager that I worked with, um, and she basically followed him around, which is, hey, it's good for her. I mean, she's doing really well. Um, so, anyway, let's go into uh, predictions for the Louisville Western game. What are you thinking? Uh, I will go ahead and tell you that uh, – Western versus Louisville. ESPN is giving Louisville 11 and a half. I think that's awfully generous for them, too. Because well, right now, at- the, uh, right now, the money line is 440. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it would be 
it's possible it'll end up being that close because I mean, with the, just the altered practice schedules and just how different this off season has looked for both teams, it's really hard to expect what we'll actually see on Saturday. I mean, seeing how uh, Tyrell's going to fit in with our offense at quarterback, seeing how our offensive line holds up against Louisville's defense, then of course seeing how these young wide receivers do. I mean, there's so many different things that'll factor into how this team looks. But, I mean, it, taking our defense into account of last season, I think that they would have maybe thought about that, that we basically have the same defensive core as last year. But with, I think it's 23 seniors that are on the roster this season. So, wow. I mean, we got, a, we got a lot of experienced guys. And, I mean, Louisville's good, too. I mean, I'm definitely not going to be sleeping on them at all. I mean, they're kind of predicted to do middle of the pack in the ACC, which is about usual, at least since they got their new coach. So, I think it'll be pretty solid. I'll go ahead and give you my prediction. I think it'll be Louisville pretty close. I think it'll be like 23 to 13. Just for the fact that there might be some more things that we need to iron out on offense to be able to keep up with everything. So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, honestly, I mean, that's that's a great guess um, or prediction, I should say. Western, um, looking at ESPN right here, they've got the team rating or team rankings and number fire. They've got Louisville at like 33, 34 to Western 23. Um, mm-hmm. And that's not a bad that's not a bad uh, prediction there. I agree. I think it's going to be, you know, Louisville probably three scores, us two scores or one score. I think it's going to be a close one. Uh, I'll go ahead and just say it's going to be like 35-21. Um, I, I agree with you. I think there are things that we're going to have to iron out. It's first game of the season. Uh, pretty stout opponent in state. I would go so far as to say a pre-rival. Uh, no. I would like to see that I mean, someday. It's still an in-state school rival, I consider them. If we were in middle school, we would be talking. That's how we say it back in my day. <laughs> It'd be like, hey, what's up, girl? Well, I mean, if you take basketball into account, I mean, we've always played them in women's basketball. We've generally played them in men's basketball, and they're one of the only Power 5 teams that actually has the balls to play us in our own building. So I do respect Louisville a lot. I do for that. Yeah. It's interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But anyway, um, and honestly, with the COVID crisis or whatever you want to call it – I would feel like Western would want to play more in-state schools anyway. You yeah, because, I mean, it limits travel and everything, which is one it, of the main things that they're trying to get rid of this season. So, And, I mean, how many people – And okay, of course, there's new standards uh, that Western's put out, but what are we at now, like 2,000 fans in the stadium? Well, I can give you the official update on that. I just yes. read it. I think it's at like 20%. So for the Houch, there will be 5,000 people max, and 1,000 of that will be students, that they're limiting 1,000 tickets just for students, which I think is a good thing. You do have to wear a face mask at all times. Like that is pretty clear on their website. You have to have a face mask coming in. They will also check your temperature. If it's above 104, you can't come. Of course, all the other safety stuff and – just security things like the clear bag. You still have to have all of that and everything. And they're limiting this, but the seating is going to be kind of weird because they're distancing everybody. You're going to be kind of spread out from other people unless you're with your family or something like that. So it's so, only going to be about 5,000 people max in the house this year. So how weird is it for you? Like when you go out the door for work, you're like phone, keys, wallet, mask. Ugh, right? Yeah, it's I mean, annoying, you, but I mean, thankfully, I mean, not work. If I were to forget one, I, we have plenty of face masks there that I could just use. But I mean, it is just another thing that we have to have with us everywhere we go if we're going anywhere in public at this point. Yes, I mean, I agree. It's just the norm that we've gotten to, you know, where, and I kind of agree. There was a guy I heard on the radio the other day. He's like, he's talking about wearing his mask, and he just wears one of those paper blue masks that you, you know, you buy for like 10 cents or whatever and they sell for $4. And um, he's like, I just wear that because he's like, I don't want to get into a fashion statement with it because that means that it's here to stay. And I was like, (laughs) that's what I said. I was like, Oh my gosh, that's pretty true. But like, even at my work, like um, I had, I've been wearing like that copper mask thing, which Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm some kind of bandit. 
or and then of course uh, at work they got us these more professional looking masks. So I typically leave that with my suit so I don't you know get that dirty or stinking or anything. But the thing I've come away with wearing masks is our breath like stinks typically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like really like you don't realize it because you'll be just like talking and it doesn't blow back in your face, but you, but I swear, dude, I've bought like four or five packs of mm-hmm. gum yeah, since we've had, been having to wear masks. And I mean, I'm talking about like the big thick gum because it's like, I'm, I'm <laughs> self-conscious now. I'm like, okay, start chewing some gum. Cause I'm not smelling my breath all day, you know, but uh, it's the new thing we're living with. And it's, um, I, I think it's good. Western's doing this. Um, and I will kind of give you all a behind the scenes. I've kind of been putting off putting out the podcast uh, because I've kind of been waiting for them to cancel the season. It sounds bad or at least postpone some stuff, but um, I am glad we are having season. Yeah. So don't get me wrong there, but it's just, I guess the stress of it, you know, when all the other conferences were canceling, I honestly was waiting for Western to do the same. Yeah, because I had to go back and revise my whole every expectation to have article. Like, I haven't even fixed it since we took off one of the teams to where it's just 11 teams now. But, like, the ch- I put the chance of us having the season canceled at, like, 30%. And that was, like, two months ago. And there was talks, like, a month ago where it could have been even higher percentage than that. So, I mean... Other teams have shown, like, they. I can't remember which games it was, but some of the previous college football games already played. They had all of their tests before the game, played each other, had all of their tests after the game, no new cases. So, wow, that's great. That's, that's what so, we want to happen. Honestly, like, I've been waiting for teams to, to uh, put, like, a face mask or a face shield on the face mask or require all yeah. the players to have visors, clear visors, you know? I mean, kick it back to 2004. I'd be all right with that. <laughs> Everybody wearing a visor like that. I mean, I mean, basically, that's how it was back in the day. Everybody and, wore visors. Are, here's an issue that I'm going to have with this season, though, is that there was a team, I can't remember who it was, but all of their tight ends, because of contract, t- uh, contract tracing, they weren't able to play because they had been around someone that had COVID. So none of the tight ends for that team was able to play. So they had offensive linemen basically do yes. what the tight ends would do. I mean, giving the big boys a chance to go after yeah. the football. That's but hilarious. see, if that were to happen for Western, like say some random person that uh, D'Angelo Malone knows – gets COVID and he may have been around them for just a little bit at some point, like technically if he were to go back and do contract tracing, then he would have to sit out or something. And like all that. the defense. And, and yeah. And just by him sitting out, not only does he have to sit out, but all the other people that he has been close to has to sit out. And that just basically wipes out all of the starters and reserves that we could have for a position And it could end up costing us quite a few games. So, I mean, one thing that's going to happen with this season, regardless of how it comes out, is that we're going to be like, have a situation possibly like that where we'll be like, that that wouldn't have happened any other season. Like, we're just going to have to treat it as some type of weird type of injury thing. As as much as it sucks, but it it might cost us a few games. But just the fact that we have a season is going to be enough for me. I mean, I think we can still end up with a winning record, and just having football in this time is something that will be good to see. I think it's going to be really weird to look back and go, Western was 7-4? and That can't be right. You know, we're just going to be like, wait, oh, no, that was that year. Yeah. And, I mean, um, that's still the best-case scenario is that we play all 11 of our games. I mean, it could happen where one team, someone tests positive, and they'd be around that guy, and they have to cancel stuff for two weeks and aren't able to make it up. I mean, that's still something that's possible. We don't know yet. Uh, honestly, yeah. I mean, you're you're completely right. And I mean, there's so many unknowns entering this season that as much as we want to try to sit here and predict different things that could happen, I mean, with this season, it's completely unpredictable with all this COVID stuff. Sadly, I, I'm hoping that by this time next year, we this is long behind us, and we do not have this. I hope so. Have to have this talk. I'm tired um, of wearing a face mask eight hours a day. <laughs> knock on wood, I haven't had to do that. Um, obviously, yeah, if we have services and stuff, then I have to wear a mask. Um, but typically, what I do is I go in the office, take the thing off, and shut the door because I'm I'm like yeah. I'm done. I need to take a 20 minute break of this thing. I'm not doing it anymore. 
and then I go back outside or go back to the service. But um, yeah, like you said, I mean, I think it's going to be one of those things where where a quote player gets quote injured, and the injury is they you know their contact trace to have COVID, and they're in quarantine for four days, five days, whatever. And if they show symptoms, then you know that's where you are. If they don't show symptoms, then that's where they are. Mm-hmm. Um, but and I the think thing that- is, is that I mean, kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but here it is, September 9th, as we record this, and there still isn't a finalized men's basketball schedule yet. <sighs> Great. Which is hard to believe. I know I was going to mention basketball just a little bit because, I mean, it's Western. We're, I still consider us a basketball school and always will as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. But, I mean, just looking at basketball, that's something that we haven't figured out yet either. I mean, if you kind of take the same idea for what they're doing with the Houch, being able to do 20% capacity, being able to spread everybody out inside of Diddle, probably have a big chunk of the tickets reserved for students to where they can come. And then the rest uh, season <laughs> ticket holders They'll so, probably check temperatures and stuff like that too. wear face masks, the whole nine yards. I'm honestly, I'm going to say that you're probably right. They're probably going to do like 20%, um, you know, six foot apart in each section, yada, yada, yada. My thing is, for instance, let's say like football, uh, mm-hmm. since you can't pack the house, uh, could we get like the cutout posters like they're doing in baseball and put them Maybe. on the grassy knoll at the top? And if the ball hits it, like you get like a free towel, they mail you a towel. See, or something. I know that there's people that have done stuff like that, and I think it's a great, but it's, I haven't heard anything as far as Western doing anything. Western's not that fun. They're not going to do that. They're, yeah. You so. can suggest it. You can suggest <laughs> it. It may be. Just message your cousin Todd, and yeah. maybe you can get that hooked up. I'll have to tell cousin Todd at our next family reunion <laughs> as we're socially distant. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be that would be really interesting. Uh, so I'm assuming you and Matt aren't going to have your annual meeting with Todd this year. Uh, probably not. I mean, <laughs> we haven't really put much of a thing out to it. I mean, obviously this year has been just completely crazy yes. i mean my schedule my work schedule has picked up a lot now that we're getting closer to the holidays and pumpkin spice is back oh and we've God. had a lot of people pumpkin quit spice. and yeah no it's already that time of the year for us and it's just going to get busier and busier so if i had to deal with pumpkin spice i'd probably quit too so no offense <laughs> <laughs> yeah pumpkin spice and the karens that go with it um if yeah. you're a karen and you're nice i'm sorry but that's just the way things are now um true but, uh, so next week, like I said, we've got Liberty. Um, we talked about them a little bit. They're going to be a pretty decent team, uh, just to kind of recap there. Uh, so I guess, Jared, I guess the last thing we've got to cover tonight is kind of like what we've been doing uh, since we've been waiting for sports. Um, for myself, I've we've been playing uh, with uh, Abby, who's now seven months. She'll be eight months at the end of September here. Um, wow. She's, yeah, she's giggling and she's already got two teeth. Mm-hmm. So I'm a proud papa. Um, she said mama like three months ago or something, and I'm still trying to get her to say daddy. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's fine. I don't care. Uh, it doesn't bother me. She does, she is so funny because you'll be, you'll look her dead in the eyes. And I'll just like, just talk to her, you know, be like, Hey, you know, blah, 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 sing to her, whatever. And she will look you right back in the face and she'll just start talking. Blah, 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 blah. And you're like, this is important, I guess, apparently. And I mean, it'll be like a two minute rant. And I'm like, wow, I guess you're going to be a podcaster someday. (laughs) Take after her old man. (laughs) Yeah, I guess so. Um, I've watched a lot of uh, TV, watched a lot of anime. I will say, um, I love the new show on Netflix, Cobra Kai. Jared, have you seen that? Oh, nice. Is that based off of uh, Karate Kid? Yes. <laughs> I, I love it. I absolutely love that show. It was, it's so funny. Um, the guy, uh, I can't think of his name. I think it's William Zabak. He play. his name is uh, Johnny Lawrence in the show. Uh, he's the original karate kid who got kicked in the face by uh daniel larusso uh mm-hmm. aka ralph mancioni or i think is what his name is uh so yeah. <laughs> so it is uh it's 
it's it's great. I'm not going to ruin it for our listeners, but please check it out. Uh, my wife and I, we binged it. Uh, we watched Yellowstone on the Peacock new subscription thingy. Uh, another great show. I'd recommend, highly recommend to you all. Um, and what else have we watched? I've tried some other shows and some of them that just don't click. You know how it goes. Um, yeah. but, and basically listening to other people's podcasts, um, yeah. listening to, uh, there is a supernatural podcast I've been listening to. Uh, Jared, I think you would love it. It's not necessarily a oh, lot of yeah. ghosts, but it's just kind of weird stuff that happens sometimes. Weird stuff uh, is my favorite stuff. Uh, there's several, uh, there's a few different abductions. Uh, there is, um, oh my gosh. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I just went blank. I'll have to look it up. There is a uh, episode about uh, the CIA poisoning people. That was fun. That was a good episode. Uh, I'm sorry, I was checking real quick. It is well. There's MK Ultra, the Bessa Mafia. Which, if you don't know what that is, you need to listen into. The Supernatural podcast. It's a really good podcast. Majestic 12 is what it's called. Okay. Um, check it out if you got some free time. It's it's a pretty good podcast. Uh, obviously, listen to us first, but then go to them. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, so, Jared, what have you been into, buddy? Oh, Lord. <laughs> I know, it's, right? It's crazy because March was basically felt like an entire year, but ever since April, it has just gone by so fast. <laughs> But, I mean, I'm still working at Starbucks down in Rivergate. I mean, it's going well. Uh, I recorded, like, a whole ambient album in May. I got that together, released it in July. It's done pretty good. So I'm thankful for that, being able to have some extra time to do some solo music. Uh, with the One Church stuff, I was able to record. We were supposed to have a concert in March, which was canceled because of COVID. And we were able to take all the songs we were going to do for that a few weeks ago. And we were able to record it over at Hillview Heights, all of the different songs. We edited a video to go with them. So we were still able to do that and record all of our new music. Um, I've been working a whole lot. I rewatched the entire series of Courage the Cowardly Dog. So <laughs> that was fun. That show is a trip. Yeah, I, I watched it as a kid and I loved it. Like it, it probably explains why I have such a dark and surreal <laughs> sense of humor. It That's completely great. does. It's why I like so many different weird things. Just rewatching it as an adult has been so much fun. Seeing all the <laughs> crazy things that happen. And it made me realize that it's basically my dog because he's part beagle and he is a very <laughs> cowardly dog and he fits oh, it to a T. He just doesn't scream the same way he does. <laughs> But, man, I've just been watching so much random crap. I've rewatched all of Courage. I've been watching a bunch of random YouTubers. Uh, Gray still plays. He's one of my favorite people on the whole thing. Oh, my God. Like, he is hilarious. I love watching like, Gray still all of the videos. All right. So we're back with whatever video game he's playing. <laughs> These videos of The Sims. Like, he does The Sims 4 and puts them yes. in these crazy situations with Florida Man. <laughs> Florida Man, Australia is, Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like all of those videos are so good. So, yes. I mean, I've been watching him. I think I rewatched Air Bud a few times. I've rewatched a bunch of random movies. I know some Ace Ventura movies. Oh, my uh, gosh. Yeah. So, it just depends on how much free time I had. I mean, I never took any of the 30 days off for work. So, I just kept staying steady with it. And, then i mean august last week uh, last month was super busy for me like with all the practices for the thing we recorded at hillview and so many other things on top of that and so i mean it's probably going to be even more and more less free time from now on <laughs> i can't yeah. i'm kind of I don't know if I'll get to go to any Western games this year, which kind of stinks. We didn't renew our season tickets just because, I mean, if it's going to be so distant, I mean, there's no real point. And also, like with my work schedule, I'm having to work so frequently, especially once the holidays get here in November and December. I'm not going to have any free time. So I'll still be able to hopefully do some tweets and stuff like that through the account, just watching it on TV if I don't have to work. So we'll see how all that goes. I'm kind of like you because – we don't have season tickets because of 
crazy how our work is and everything. Excuse me, but they, um, I'm kind of like you in a way because I feel like, like even if you did have season tickets, like are you going to get it? You know, are you going to be able to be able to go? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, no, it's gonna, it's going to be hard to say. Like, there's just so many unknowns. I didn't really understand the point of taking the risk. One thing that I did do through through, through Western. Like some alumni may have seen where Western is doing the oral history thing, which I think is pretty cool. I opted in on that. I was able to kind of what you do is that you call and they ask you a bunch of questions about your time at Western and you just kind of reminisce on all of the things that you did and things, all the things that you loved about campus and they record all of it. And what they're going to do is that they're basically making this huge thing. I think they're going to put it in the Library of Congress as well. Wow. Once they get the full directory of everything, it's going to be pretty cool. Like there's a huge merch bundle with it. I know you get like a travel bag, a sweatshirt, a polo, a few other things as well. Yeah, And you'll get a copy of the oral history thing once it's done. But in the first email they sent out after I recorded mine, I already approved all of my stuff with it. Like my story was in there and it was kind of cool to read back all of the stuff they took from my interview that will be able to stay in that for basically ever, which I think is pretty cool. It's a huge undertaking. It's the first time they've ever done anything like this. That so is actually I kind of wanted really to be a part of it. And I think it could, they'll be releasing it this time next year, like the full copies of it. I think you have to finalize everything by January. So, I mean, I don't know if you're an alumni, I don't know if you've seen any emails or have gotten anything in the mail about it. I think it's pretty cool. I opted in on it. And just to help the university through this time right now, too, I know they probably need the money. I know that this is still probably the biggest freshman class that Western has ever had. And it's been a lot different. I've talked to a bunch of people that are students and seen how all that has been. And it's definitely different. Some people have just a few online classes and maybe some weird kind of in-person things and hybrids is really interesting times. But So I don't want to cut you off. Let me, uh, let me ask you this real quick. Um, yeah. So did you, did you see the con quote controversy with uh, president? Uh, what is it? Cabroni? No, oh, Cabroni. Oh, the t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. It's the t-shirt. Is that not the funniest thing ever? So for see, those of you who don't know, uh, oh president gosh. Cabroni was in a, was it Instagram or was it a tweet? It was Facebook and a tweet. It was basically all of Western social media, either his or just so one of the accounts. Put, so, guys, he put out there, for you all listening, he put out there, um, you know, let's do our part, you know, all this this really good message about wearing a mask and blah, blah, blah. And then he's holding up a T-shirt that says, wear your damn mask. And all of these... All Karen. of the Christian mobs. Yes. All of the Christian mobs. All the Christian mobs went on social media and was going crazy that he held up a shirt that said, wear your damn mask. And I and think the it's thing that I think is so funny is because if they were to hear anything that their precious child were to say out on campus by themselves in college, that would be mild. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The irony oh, is, not me. Lost, I'll say that, but it was, I, I thought think it was it's hilarious. So I did too. I thought it was really funny. I was like, really? Like I didn't realize we were Campbellsville now. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just uh, just some fun controversy that you all missed in the uh, the. Yeah, the, I uh, guess between that and the whole BYU tournament thing, that was still <laughs> one of the things that sustained us during this big old dry spell that we had in sports. Yes, yes, it definitely did. Um, well, that's all I've got tonight. Um, we will be back with you next week. Uh, we will discuss liberty a little bit more in depth. Uh, we'll recap the Louisville game, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed the show, and uh, we'll be talking to you next week. Uh, and as yeah, always, it feels good guys, to be back. It does. It does feel good. It does feel good. Um, can't wait to do another episode next week, and hopefully uh, we'll finish up the season and we'll be into men's basketball and women's basketball before you know it. Yeah, here's um, to us entering the unknown, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but as soon as we find out something, it'll be either be on the towel rack. Uh, so check them out or check out, uh, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and all the good stuff, all the social medias, um, probably. Um, uh, but as always guys, go tops. Go tops.